Hello everyone, welcome to The Ranting Shop. It's me, Melissa, and we're back here today to discuss the Never Ever Met <laughs> Season 1. And at this point, this should be Episode 6, but I'm not quite sure. Either way it goes, I think this particular episode allowed the viewers to really confirm their suspicions about a particular couple that keep lying and saying they have a connection when they both know they don't. It also emphasized a lot of things pertaining to their relationship indirectly. We got to see who sees themselves as the leader of each of those relationships during that very significant exercise so let's get into things so first off the problematic couple sienna and brandon the show decided you know what because brandon said he doesn't want to explore anything further with sienna it doesn't make sense for them to continue on with this process and Last episode, viewers were quite confused because we were like, okay, well, since he said there's no more exploring of connections, why are they still there, right? And in this episode, they got sent home because it literally makes no sense for them to continue to participate in exercises that are meant to bond when... Brandon has decided he doesn't want to bond. Do you understand? And rightfully so. Sienna has a lot of issues that she needs to deal with. I've already said that multiple times. It is outside of Brandon. It is all to do with her and her trauma and how to better convey her emotions without disrespecting people and why it is that she always feels the need to be on the defensive even when the intention is not to disrespect her. You know, that says a lot about her upbringing and why she's had to have this tough defense when it comes to people she feels are disrespecting her. Typically, these things stem from someone that was softer in an earlier part of their lives but got hardened because something crossed their boundaries or something violated them in some way so love and light to both of them but let's move on so the next couple i want to talk about is let's do jody and aaron we all know that jody and aaron have no connection from the very beginning when they first met, she seemed irritated by him and she gave him absolutely no grace. And women that like men give them a lot of grace. Women that like men give them a lot of chances. Women that like men engage with them. You could tell there's a liking there, there's an interest there. But with Jody and Aaron, there's zero, right? And they continue to lie to the host and to lie to themselves. And that really, it's really pissing me off and it's pissing off a lot of viewers. Now, their issue in the house was they don't understand how Chris could be so disrespectful and bond with a woman beside the woman he came there with to bond with. And I have to give Millie her props. Because when I saw that clip, I was like, exactly, absolutely, call them out because this is BS. You came there with Sandia for Sandia, but you're bonding with Jody, and Jody is your favorite person in the house because she's your sounding board because everything she, you says, she repeats and claims she's uh, agreeing with, like, She's so male-identified, and I don't even like that term, but she's so male-identified. I think she seeks validity from men, which is why a lot of her talking points are very male-centered. And the reason why she and Chris are bonding is because Chris wants somebody, anybody, to agree with what he says. 
He's he's already thinking that everything he says is right. He just needs somebody else to be in his corner to basically prove to himself that he's right. It's not even anything about Jody per se. It's more so because Jody is validating me and my delusion. I'm going to stick up for which is crazy to me. Right? But I completely agree with Millie. You came here first, Sandia. Why are you all up in another woman's face? Why are you disrespecting another woman? And what really irritates me about Sandia is that she's just quiet in the background. Has nothing to say. Has nothing to say. Now, if it was a situation where Sandia never came to the other women or never agreed with any of what the women were saying, then okay, I would agree. But if it's a situation where when they pulled her aside, it was Diamond and Millie who pulled her aside. She was so ready to tell them, yeah, I don't like how he does this and I don't like how he does that. So it's like you cannot expect to divulge that to the women and expect them to be quiet. Right? But I don't like how some people kind of put batteries in your back and they just let you do what you're doing in the meantime they're quiet as a church mouse it's like you'd swear that they're the problematic persons and they're going off for no reason you literally divulge to these women sandia that you did not like how chris was moving with jody right but then you'd swear she never said it. You'd swear she never confided in these women. You'd swear these women are just going off like crazy people. And I hate that. This is a type of woman you should never stand up for. Because you're going to end up taking all the heat while she goes back to the same guy she says is problematic. These women are dangerous. You're going to end up putting yourself in front of a firing squad for them. And they're going to watch you get killed while they just sit there in silence. Don't ever stick up for women like this. If they're not ready to speak up for themselves, that is none of your concern. The most you should do in that situation is tell them, okay, I agree with what you're saying. And it's all based on how you choose to move. However you choose to move, I'm supportive of you. That's all you give them. And let them move how they want to move. But don't ever go in front of any gun, bullet, train, car, nothing for them. Because they'll sit there, stand there, and watch you get yourself put in a dangerous situation and they're not gonna say nothing about it and that's what we saw both with diamond and in this episode with millie right um and i'm happy millie shut him down that's the type of woman he'd run away from which is why it's so obvious that people keep saying oh well i think that they should exchange partners Sandia should go with Aaron and Jody should go with um, Chris. That's the ho most horrible thing I've ever heard. That wouldn't work either. Aaron doesn't even want women. So what makes you think he'd, he'd, he'd want Sandia? It's not about matching personalities. It's about genuine connections. That's what people are failing to understand. Two people with... Imagine putting somebody that has the same level of fieriness as Sienna with her because they have matching personalities. You think that would go well? You think putting two people who don't speak up for themselves would go well together? No, it wouldn't. They're both going to be trampled on. They're both going to be um, disrespected. They're both equally going to be tossed to the side. That's not going to work. And Sandia, to me, doesn't want a quiet man like Aaron. Aaron does not stick up for himself. Why would a woman want a man who cannot stick up for themselves? Why would a woman want a man who doesn't portray the what is considered to be masculine traits? Like, why would any woman want that type of man? 
oh, because our personalities match. That's BS. They would never work because Chris doesn't want Jody. Romantically, at least. He simply likes her because she agrees with everything he says. And that's that. He wants somebody in his corner and Jody is that person that is in his corner. This is self-serving and has nothing to do with Jody per se. And everything to do with him feeling justified in how he thinks. Because nobody really agrees with him. And now that Brandon has left, there's literally nobody there that is going to agree with Chris. And what he is doing on how he's treating Sandia. They just choose not to speak on it. Right? But what really further made viewers understand that Jody and Aaron have zero chemistry was, or should I say, is the date they had, the bondage date that they had, right? So they were asked to, you know, participate in this bondage thing to bring them closer together. And during the process, they have to determine who is going to be the one being tied and who is going to do the tying. What that brought to light for me was that shows us who is the dominant partner in each of these relationships, right? So let's go down the line and see if what I'm saying is indeed what it probably is. So we're going to start with Diamond and what's his name? Aaron. Who's the one that decided to do the tying? Diamond. Prior to that situation, we saw Diamond literally tell or convince Aaron to speak up for her. And he did that. He went right ahead and he did exactly what Diamond told him to do. So that seems to be quite fair that Diamond would be the one in the power position there. Because a lot of people feel like you have to be the man to be in the power position, not necessarily. You just have to be able to manipulate your partner in a way that is, I guess, feminine or whichever way that is your power resting in that and getting your partner to do what you want them to do. And that's what we saw Diamond doing. So that made sense. Then we have the situation with, let's look at Millie and Greg. Millie immediately was like, I'm the one that's going to do the time. I don't even feel like Greg really agreed per se, but he went along with it. Because Millie has shown herself to be extremely strong-minded. And she doesn't portray as a weak duckling like Sandia does. If she thinks something is inappropriate or if she's being called out for any reason, she's going to speak up and she's not afraid to do it. She doesn't need Greg to speak up for her. She doesn't need Greg to protect her. She can speak for herself, right? And so it makes sense, complete sense, that while Millie is being the more masculine part of that relationship, she would be the one to be in the power position there. So that made perfect sense to me. And as much as Greg is making himself out to be the, oh, I'm the alpha man, he doesn't give alpha man. He actually gives exactly what we saw in this exercise. A submissive man. Now, where it's different between Millie and Diamond is that with Millie, it's a very masculine type of power that she holds or she has as a defense mechanism. And you could tell. Whereas with Diamond, she controls but in a feminine way. So... This to me is what I saw with them. Now, when it came to Aaron, before I get to Aaron and Jody, I think it was Shay and Josh. And Josh was the one that wanted to tie up Shay. No surprise there. Like, that doesn't necessarily shock me. I don't know. It just doesn't. She likes him, so of course she's going to give him the opportunity to take the power position. It is what it is. It's typical. Now, last but not least, Aaron and and J. Aaron and Jody. Now, of course, nobody's surprised. 
that Jody wanted to be the one in the power position. She's literally been in the power position the entire relationship from the first date. She's been the one opening the bottles, showing him how to do certain things, telling him what to do, telling him how to do it. Throughout the entire couple of episodes prior, she's been the one backing at him. Oh, don't touch my drink. You can't have my drink. I made my drink for myself. The way she backs at him and shouts at him and treats him like a child. It doesn't surprise me. You almost see him shutting down when she exerts her masculine energy. She, he shuts down. He acts like a woman in the situation, right? And so I'm not shocked that she decided to be the, in the power position. Of course she'd be. I'd be shocked if she decided to not be in the power position. I'd be shocked. And he didn't seem too pleased about it. It's almost like he wanted to show her. I can be masculine. I can do this. And, and she was like, no, you can't. And she automatically took the power position. And throughout the entire process, you could see no chemistry with them. All the other couples, they're kissing, they're touching, they're hugging. With them, absolutely nothing. It, it gave nothing. Even after the process, there was no, how are you feeling? Are you good? Was it good? Did you feel great? Did you feel, there's no questions, nothing. He was trying to see, okay, other couples are doing other things. Do you want to? She's like, absolutely not. And it's not because, and then later on, she's talking to um, Sandy and telling her, oh, um, I don't choose to be all up in my partner's face. And it doesn't mean that I don't have a connection. It just means that that's not the type of, and then she did speak about being SA'd. And it still did not make sense. Okay, I understand that she was essayed and I'm sympathetic towards that. But it's hard to really feel sorry for her because she doesn't give soft. She's very hard and she's unmoving. Like the only bit of soft I saw with her was when she was giggling at Chris. And that was it. With Aaron... She doesn't even want to talk to him. So when I said last review that they were giving friends, they're not even giving friends. Because they were, if they were in fact giving friends, we would see a lot of giggling, laughing, joking. There wasn't even that. They don't even have a friendship connection. Neither do they have a romantic connection. And I'm so glad that ding, 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 in this episode, Aaron is like, yeah, she may like the way I think. And I don't even think she likes the way he thinks. She may like my body. I've not seen her admiring his body not one time. Oh, but yeah, we don't have a romantic connection. No, you guys don't have any connection. Not romantic, not physical, not mental, nothing. Nothing. You guys have no connection. So he's still delusional. And I don't even think he's being delusional. To say he's being delusional is giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not giving them any benefit of any doubt. They're not a real partnership. She doesn't find anything in him that she wants. And she's talking about, oh, I'm used to just sleeping with men and then never talking to them again. So I want to have a different approach. This has nothing to do with none of that. Because I'm pretty sure if Chris happened to be a connection, she would have probably slept with Chris by now. So this whole thing about, oh, I want to move differently because before that's what, that had been my approach is bull-ish. It's bull. It's a lie. That's not what it is at all. And I just hate jo Jody thinking that she's smarter than the viewers and she's smarter than the host and she's smarter than everybody in that house. You're not. People see right through your BS, which is why they've confronted you time and time again because you're not about to be there lying and acting as if you do have this thing with Aaron. Nobody has seen it. And these are people that are in the house with you 24-7.
They've never seen you interactive with Aaron. According to Millie, you haven't had any nice... Well, according to Air, the other Aaron, you haven't had any nice... Well, Millie said that, I think. You haven't had any nice thing to say about Aaron, but there you are giggling and smiling with Chris, who you don't even know, who you don't even have a, 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 a relationship with. But the person you were supposedly talking online with for 10 months... Or however long it was, you give them nothing. And it's really funny how Aaron is just now talking about it. Just now talking about, yeah, um, I'm trying to connect with her, but it's hard. It's not hard. She just does not like you. It's not hard. It's not difficult. Because I guarantee you, if you were Chris... She would have opened up to you a long time ago. You guys would have done, had sexual relations. Like it wouldn't have taken her any time. And there would be absolutely no excuse about, oh, it's my trauma. Oh, I don't want to repeat past things. It would have been none of that. Women really know how to manipulate men and make men feel like, oh, it's not you. It's just me. It's me because I have this and I have that. Men, I think, are smart enough to pick up on the fact that that's BS. They have enough sense. And I think Aaron knew from the beginning. But I feel like he feels like he owes Judy, like he has to lie for Judy. Because Jody wants to be in the house. So even though he knows it doesn't serve him or benefit him, he needs to lie about it. Because she wants to stay in the house. Because she wants to tell people or advertise to people that I'm a sexologist, so I know. I'm a sexologist. Yes, I'm a sex... She wants everybody to know that she's a sexologist. And I've seen her page and she looks like she does podcasts. So it speaks to her wanting... Her wanting to advertise what she does more than anything else. That's what it's giving. And I don't like people that lie to my face. I don't like people that play in my face, lie to my face and think I'm going to believe your lies. Like, are you dumb? Are you dumb? Right. Anyways, let's move on from these people and talk about Sandia and Chris. Talking about Sandia and Chris, their experience, before I even go there, Millie confronted Chris. And I already spoke about this. I did this huge rant. Sandia, silent. Right? Silent. So for me, it would be a situation where if she's not sticking up for herself, in this moment, I'm going to keep my, my mouth shut and mind my business. Because there's no way I'm going to be fighting hard over you then you are fighting for your own self. There's no way. But they confronted Chris. Chris is like, Jody's my favorite person in the house. Blah, 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 blah. Millie's thing is like, that's not the person you came to connect with. You came to connect with Sandia. And he knew better than to go back and forth with Millie because Millie is not Sandia. Millie will meet you where you are. Right? Sandia would probably just stop talking and let you just babble about how she's wrong and how her feelings are invalid not Millie men know who to mess with you know they know they know they can get over they can really trick two people two types of women sorry the women they like no sorry the women that like them and the women that are weak Jody likes him he can slap her across the face and she'll make an excuse for him. He knows that. Sandia likes him, but she's also weak. So he knows I can step over her. I can tell her what I want. She's going to stay right there. So these two types of women, that these women will be in his corner all day. Not a woman like Millie. So... They end up going to the side and he's like, well, um, if, 
you feel good it's all about you if you don't feel any way if you don't feel anyhow then that's all i care about i don't care about these other people i just feel like these people need to mind their business and so on and so forth and some dears they're like oh and i saw this one shouting and i saw that one shouting and i'm like oh my god she's acting oblivious She's acting like she didn't contribute partially to these women feeling emboldened to speak on her behalf. I don't like women like that. Don't have me here standing up for you while you go back to the man that's treating you like ish and basically call me standing up for you almost like it's an inconvenience almost like you didn't see where that was coming from almost like it seemed like me standing up for you was unreasonable i hate that i hate that i utterly despise that because how dare you i'm sticking up for you and this is how you treat me to your partner which is leading me to believe that although Sandia has told these women she doesn't like certain things Chris is doing, to Chris's face, yes, she also shares her insecurities and things, but to Chris's face, she makes it seem as if the women are the ones influencing her. I think she's, she's really leaning into the weakling that Chris thinks she is. And I think she's doing it because she still wants Chris. She wants to keep Chris. She wants Chris. So in order to keep Chris, she has to lean into that weak duckling mindset that Chris has of her in order for them to get along. Because I highly doubt that she ever came to Chris and said, yeah, I kind of spoke to the women and I told them certain things. I highly doubt she's told that to Chris. So in Chris's mind, it's like, oh, it's these women not minding their business. It's these women looking at other people's business. It's these women influencing you. And the whole time, she's literally telling the women the same thing that they're saying to her, that they're seeing. So me, at this moment, I have zero empathy for Sandia. She likes it. That's not my business at that point. If she likes it, I love it. Good for her. They went to therapy. Chrissy's whole thing is, she's accusing me. And she's, she's making me feel, she's trying to control me. All the girl is telling you is, I don't feel comfortable with the way you interact with the other woman. And you see it as control. That has nothing to do with Sandia and everything to do with the fact that you have issues you have to work with from your past. You think women are not in general want to control you. So the way you try to be the one in control is to use women and discard women. But there will be one day that chris gets his match because if that's the energy you're gonna give out you're gonna meet your match you're gonna find somebody that is the same just like you and it's gonna be an issue it's gonna be world war 10 because you're gonna be fighting for your life at that moment which is why i think he knows he has something good with sandia and he knows he doesn't want to mess it up but also I don't like clingy women. I don't like your, your feelings are invalid. I don't, I don't like this and I don't like that. But given the chance, would he ever go ahead and choose Jody? No. For people to think that Chris would ever choose Jody, these people are delusional. Chris would never choose Jody. Chris is not attracted to Jody. Nor is he interested in Jody in a long term relationship sense. This man wants a submissive woman. And we see Jody has a propensity to 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 shout and yell and, and fight back. He's seen that. He's seen that. He's not blind. He doesn't want that. Right? But if he did, I'm pretty sure Jody would be jumping on top of that opportunity but anyways let's get into the situation lastly but not least 
we have diamond oh yeah and i forgot to mention the the exercise the bondage exercise of sandia choosing to be submissive in that situation and chris choosing to be the dominant one that doesn't shock me at all i just wish that sandia would stop with this act like she's this weakling that she doesn't stand up for herself knowing fully well she's capable of doing it it's not like she's never spoken to chris and told chris about her feelings and things like that she just wants people, including Chris, to believe that she's this weakling. For some reason, she finds power in being weak. I don't get it. So, of course, she's going to choose to be the one being bondaged. And of course, Chris is going to run at the opportunity to be the one in the power position. I'm not shocked at that at all. Like, could they have at least shocked me? And made San and and said Sandia, at least try to be dominant for once in your life. I was kind of like annoyed by, it, but anyways, it was typical, regular, expected. All of these. But it also showed something true, that in this their relationship, Chris is the lead. Chris is the power. She's the submissive. Right. Anyways, let's go into Diamond and Chris and Aaron. So, Diamond last episode was upset because Aaron did not step in to defend her or at least show that he agrees with her and he stands behind her. He was completely silent and he allowed Diamond to kind of take the fall by herself. She didn't appreciate it. She let him know. I don't like that you're my man. You're supposed to be my man. And these people are coming at me. I'm standing up for this woman. These people are coming at me. And you agree with what I'm saying. But yet still, when it came to speak up in front of everyone, you had nothing to say. So what really triggered him was, she's coming down for breakfast. He comes to her. She's like, I think you're fake. Because we share the same sentiments about these people. But you allowed me to basically do it by myself. And he's like, okay, that word seemed to have triggered him. He came out and he's like, he came out strong. He went to the group. I don't like you because you and you and this and that and you are wrong and you do this and you do that. And I want you to know that I also feel this way, but other people also feel that way. And whatever and whatever he said, it was coming in. It was coming quite strong. Right? But that just showed how Diamond was able to control him so that he could do what she wanted him to do. And she did it in a very feminine way. Like, I don't like how you did this. I feel like you're fake. She never yelled at him. She never screamed at him. It wasn't giving Sienna. It wasn't giving Millie. It was giving a softer feminine approach. Right? And he did it. He did what she wanted. Right? And she hap she was happy. She was like, finally, somebody is vindicating me because all of them are being silent. When they share my same sentiments, they agree with what I'm saying. And Millie had to do it. Eventually, she was called out herself and she had to say what, what she really felt. So this is not just a diamond thing. They all feel that way. And now that Brandon is not here, he has zero male allies. He has zero people that agree with what he's doing. All he has is Jody. And that's problematic because it makes Sandia uncomfortable. So he probably feels trapped like, damn, I can't even, I can't even do like a sounding sesh with anybody because nobody's really on my side. Everybody doesn't like how I'm talking with Jody and da 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 they're acting like this is an everyday thing and this is just a one-time thing and whatever the case might be. So, after that happened, of course, Diamond was pleased. And he's like, oh, I'm going to have fun tonight in a boom-boom room. And it has me wondering, did you do this because you wanted to sleep with Diamond? Or did you do this because you genuinely felt like you did Diamond wrong? 
because I'm I don't know at this point. So that happens and then they do the process, the bondage thing, and of course Diamond is in control and that made complete sense. And then Diamond Sister comes to visit and Diamond Sister is clearly clearly disliking Aaron. She doesn't like Aaron, she feels like Aaron is disrespectful and Aaron is not good enough for Diamond. And she's angry at Diamond because Diamond, according to her, is not understanding that she's worth more than um, Aaron. Right? But for me, it's like, if my sister likes Aaron, what can I do? I cannot be more upset at my at Aaron than my sister is at Aaron. I'm not in their relationship. Right? And I think that's what most mature people's viewpoint would be. It would be... I may not like him and I may not like his actions, but as long as you're happy, I could be cordial with him. She was like extremely immature, led with her emotions, and it's like, I don't like him. He was better than him. And they exchanged words on social media, and she clearly doesn't like him. Right? So Aaron has his friend. You're talking, you're vibing. Aaron's friend is shocked that he's mentioning engaging with the woman because i don't think the friend really knows diamond that well so in his mind it's fresh so he's like engagement so soon like do you know this woman do you really like this woman like that and then of course he let that go okay well if that's what you choose to do well fine i may have my hesitations but you know that's that and then he came introducing, he kind of mentioned to his friend, I don't like Diamond's sister. We had our back and forth online. She doesn't like me and so on and so forth. He goes, introduces his friend to Diamond and her sister and all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose, honey. This F you and F this and your mother and your father and your sister and your brother and your cousin and your auntie and your nene and and, and, and I, I, I this and I that and mother this and F that and da 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 and I'm like oh my goodness. But I must say that she did come into the environment with a negative attitude. I'm not condoning anything that Aaron did. I'm not saying he was right, but there's a way to communicate like adults. And if you know you're at a heightened state of emotion, calm down. Because if you're going to come on in, in at 10, you're going to make the other person respond to you at 10 and it's going to be a back and forth and it's never going to go anywhere. That doesn't even make sense. If the sister wanted to better understand Aaron, at least come to him as an adult and just be honest and use your words and state your opinions and not cursing and talking about the man's children and all these types of things. Like, come on. That's disrespectful. And then Sandia, little miss hypocrite talking about, oh, I wouldn't let um, Aaron talk to my sis. I wouldn't let Chris talk to my sister the way Diamond has let um, Aaron talk to his sister. If I were you, Sandy, I'd keep my mouth shut. Because you can't even open your mouth up and defend yourself against Chris. You think you can defend Chris against your sister? I highly doubt it, girl. Like, first of all, you need to work on defending your own self against chris then worry about if you could defend your sister against chris because if you cannot do it for yourself i highly doubt you can do it for your sister so in that moment i would have been quiet i would never have made that commentary being sandia it made you look very hypocritical if i do say so myself but anyway that was a mess and i feel like Aaron, the other Aaron, the, the sweet Aaron, was really liking it. Like, that will teach y'all to stay out of our business. Like, the way it was, like, reveling in their drama. Like, oh, oh, I heard this and I heard... And I was like, anyways, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Next episode, we're going to learn a lot more about... What couple is it going to be? Um, Greg and Millie. So, we'll 
unpack or hear about their traumas that they don't really want to discuss but we'll hear that next episode we're also gonna hear more about Erin and Jody. I really want that couple to leave because I don't like to see fitness on my screen. Let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe. See you guys next time. This is